Assalamu alaikum to the Muslims and peace to the rest of the audience. General wishes and um, well wishes and greetings to the rest of the audience. Earlier, we saw Hurricane Irma mash up, um, mash up Houston and put it underwater. We saw Hurricane Maria go in and, and oh, by the way, Irma trashed 95% of all buildings in the island of Barbuda, which is a part of the nation of Antigua. Then we saw Hurricane Maria come through and just trash the island of Puerto Rico and uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands and uh, leave Puerto Rico 100% without electricity and it will be so for the next four to five months. We have seen an earthquake ripple through Mexico City and trash it, <laughs> leaving buildings uh, partially collapsed and leaving a building completely collapsed, at least one that we saw in video. We are witnessing a type of Judgment Day event, and we got three hurricanes at the same time operating in the Caribbean Basin. Oh, at least we had them. And now the U.S. seems, I mean, under Trump at least, it seems unwilling and unable to go to Puerto Rico's aid and to go to the U.S. Virgin Islands' aid. And one of the reasons that rescue workers abandoned Houston was because many of them were Mexican rescue workers. And I mean, they were from Mexico, living in Mexico that legally crossed the border to come and do rescue efforts in Houston. And then when Trump would not send condolences for another earthquake that hit a uh, northern city, they left, said meant to hell with this. And they went back to Mexico to do rescue work in their own country. And then this earthquake hit them. What I'm getting at here is that it appears as though God is doing exactly what it is that much of North America loves to say that God doesn't do. If you simply just take the white Western world and its civilization and the liberal elements of it, which are the majority, you will hear them say that God does not punish and these are not acts of God and God has nothing to do with this. Global warming is probably real. I'm pretty sure that it is, to be honest. Man-made and uh, naturally caused. But by the same token, we have to understand that natural disasters have a habit of hitting people when they were involved in things that were disgusting even to their own standards. Pompeii did not just get hit just because. At the, time of, uh, the, at the time that Mount Vesuvius hit Pompeii, they were involved in some nasty, freaky stuff. When that tsunami went in and trashed Indonesia and Thailand, what were they involved in? The Indonesians themselves said it. They said this was a wake-up call to go back to Allah before you go back to Allah. These things have always been eye-openers, but they've also served as warnings for us. People. Mostly black people, I want to tell that right now, what you are dealing with is a system, not just in the United States, but largely in the United States, what you are dealing with is a system in which, unfortunately, And sadly, God's justice is coming to a people that have been committing oppressions, but while the victims are still amongst them, the victims are also getting the punishments. In addition to the oppressions they've suffered at the hands of the oppressors, the natural disasters come and they don't, they don't skip over black folks. They don't skip over other victims of oppression. I mean, look, in 2016, the police officer shot Alton Sterling. And then they shot Philando Castile the next day. And then they used a bomb 
to kill Micah Johnson because he would not let them take him in alive. He did not apologize for retaliating against police officers for killing black folks and then being able to walk free for it. So they used the bomb and detonated it to kill him. What is the reason? Because when black people fight back, it is the absolute worst. That is America's nightmare. And Muslims fighting back is America's nightmare. I guess these things are so nightmarish because America knows that these are the things exactly that they deserve. Well, and they can't interpret these things logically as being anything other than retaliations for what their civilizations have done. They may try, but they can't actually do it. Their own people get up and say, the same people who will get up and say that God does not punish and never sends natural disasters are the ones who will get up and tell other white folks that no, the United States has created these terrorists by oppressing their people. These are the same ones. So they cannot sit up and say, okay, uh, black folks fighting us back uh, is, is actually just wrong. They, they can't do it. It's, it's unnatural. It makes no sense. No, they can't say it. They can't say it's the random act of an insane person. No, they know it is vengeance. They can pretend that they don't believe it, but they know. So when these police officers shot Philando Castile and Alton Sterling. And shortly after that shot Corin Gaines, I heard someone asking Allah, please send hurricanes and floods and even volcanoes and earthquakes for what they've done to others and gotten away with. Someone said this. And I know, because I wasn't standing far from him when he said it. And shortly after that, these demonstrations occurred in Baton Rouge and we saw how unjust the police were. And demonstrations occurred in other cities and we saw how unjust they were in some other cities and we saw how just they were in other cities and how fair they were. And <laughs> what wound up happening? South Louisiana still got rain. That rain flooded places, it flooded uh, uh, houses up to six and seven feet high. Entire front doors under water. And it didn't just happen in white areas, it happened in white and black areas alike. And the funny thing was, I knew some of these neighborhoods that got flooded and they were actually elevated to about 36 feet above sea level. 64 feet above sea level. How do they flood that bad? A 500 year rain is what they called it. So the natural disasters did not just hit the oppressors. The only basis or precedent for which natural disasters have hit oppressors and not the victims is when the victims left. That's it. Egypt had many natural disasters and unnatural supernatural disasters and signs in order for the, for the Pharaoh and even the people to correct themselves will wind up having to happen. Pharaoh didn't die until he chased the people and went into the ocean after them, after it parted. And it closed in on him and drowned him. And his body is still intact. Look, people who have been oppressed have had to leave before. Usually when they ask, there is a, they're, they're, they're allowed to leave. When they beg God for an opportunity to get out, they're allowed to. And I'm saying to black people, there is nothing legally stopping you from leaving the United States. If you want to stay there and fight and take it over from white folks, then I don't have any moral objection to it. But let's be honest, we don't have the organizational capability, nor do we have the military training to do that. But more importantly, we don't have the solidarity to do it. Too many of us would give each other up. We're trained to. So since we're not capable of doing that, leave. Let them suffer by themselves. I've been calling on black folks to leave. And I'll say this, as much as I hate everybody who oppresses and even disrespects black people, I'm still not going to let us off of the hook. We need to leave and those of us who are Muslim should have been gone We shouldn't have even been been here as long as we have been those of us who are Muslim and have had Opportunities to leave should have found other places to go should have never stayed 
You mustn't and you can leave. You should have left. And in all honesty, some of you say, well, I can't raise a family somewhere else. And that's true. Not right now, but eventually you might be able to. Right now, there's no way you can make it. So there's no way you can survive these natural disasters that are going to come because guess who's going to be left unrescued when people need rescuing? As has been seen, it's going to be us. And most Americans aren't even that nasty and unwilling to help. Most Americans, I was surprised to find that most Americans actually treat each other very well and very nice in daily interactions, regardless of their differences. Most of them do this. Most of them, even when they don't want into marriage, they still don't hate many other people. When they can't even agree, they don't necessarily hate and they don't really want to destroy each other a lot of times. But you still got Charlottesville. And you still have institutionalized racism and differentiation, differentiations in the reactions to uh, these outbursts that occur when whites throw a temper tantrum and when black folks rightly riot. There's still a differentiated reaction. You still see the brainwashing. I'm telling you, you need black folks. You need to get out. They cannot treat you fairly. People who don't hate you still can't treat you fairly and consider you to be completely equal. But you know what? Black Americans, especially if you leave and you go to other countries, the people will get a chance to meet you face to face and not on the television screen. And they will get a chance to see how brainwashed they were. White Americans don't even care. They don't care that they've been brainwashed in many cases. But if if we left and we went to other places, people in other nations would get a chance to see us for themselves and they would realize that they've been brainwashed. And even if they don't, you don't have to necessarily live with them. You can simply live in their lands and our own communities. They will largely leave us be for the most part. And then there's not to mention the continent that we come from. And many of us say they don't want us there. No, you're thinking of Nigeria. That's a country. That's not the whole entire African continent. Nigerians don't even want each other. If you ask many of them. But we're not talking about that. In Ghana, they want us back. In Gambia, they want us back. Guyana has plenty of land available. In Guyana, which is not even in Africa, but rather in South America, they wouldn't mind if many of us went and bought land. That's fine. We could go and we could buy land. Yeah, I'll take it. It doesn't bother them. It wouldn't be an intrusion upon them. So I'm telling you people, I'm telling you black folks, we got to get the hell out. We really do. We really need to leave the United States. And those of us who are Muslims need to be the ones leading this migration going elsewhere. Seriously. Because we always ask God to get us out of the situation where, you know what? He's done two things. He sent punishment to them and he's left the door open for us to leave. You get a passport and some money saved up and you can go. And right now, flights don't cost that much. That's real. Right now, visas don't cost too much. That's real. Right now, many countries will still allow you to stay 30 days and in that time you can start procedures to ask to stay permanently. Right now, you have the option to leave. No, you're not going to go and all of a sudden become rich when you land. No, all of your earthly problems aren't going to disappear. No, not every single racial insult is going to vanish from your life. But outright racial oppression, you ain't going to find to the same degree that you found in the United States. <laughs> Police officers can't just beat the hell out of black folks in other countries and just get away with it. Maybe in Europe, but I'm not telling you to go to Europe anyway. They're next. No, but you go into Africa, I'm sorry. Depending on which country you go into, it's 54 countries and they're not all the same. You go into these areas and no, you're not going to find the same oppression and discrimination and even the same danger that you have found in the United States, in these inner cities into which they have funneled you. No, it's not going to happen. You got African Americans that go to visit Ghana. 
then they go and they stay there and they don't come back. Why do they not tell more of us about it? Because if they did, if many of us knew how well a lot of African Americans are doing in Ghana, there'd be no African Americans in the US. Now imagine 40 million of us trying to fit in Ghana all at one time, wouldn't work. Gambia is very small, they'll take us, but they're very small. But you see, there are other places we can go. Senegal, we can go there. Liberia is rebuilding, and many Liberians have gone back to Liberia to rebuild. Sierra Leone is rebuilding. The fighting has stopped. Cameroon is generally poor, but it's stable. If you want investment opportunities, these are areas that are great for it because you can bring something new without much competition. Sudan, believe it or not, is stable. South Sudan is not, but Sudan itself, believe it or not, it is. It's poor, but if you go with a little bit of money saved up, you'll be all right. Uganda, it's not wealthy, but it's stable. You got a little bit of money saved up, you can get off to a good start. I hope that this message has been a benefit.